Arning about, roll four, interview with Adam Stone. Take one. Hi, this is Dr. Robin Scott Peters, and we are Arting About. Today we are meeting artist extraordinaire Adam Stone, and he's invited us into his workspace here in Venice Beach, California. And if there's a better place to live, I'm hard pressed to find that, and this has got to be a great place to uh, be an artist. So Adam, say hello to our guests out there in TV land. Hello everybody out there in TV land. Welcome to my home studio in beautiful sunny Mar Vista slash Venice, California. All right, so we got this, the straight poop on that. Yeah, so that's it. Welcome, so, come on in. And folks, I met Adam last year uh, as I was cruising about uh, doing some art purchasing and I went to the Bergamont, which I didn't have the greatest experience. Yeah. And I went down to Beverly Hills exhibit, it just happened to be happening. And there were amazing artists all over the place, and I ran into Adam's work, and I was like, oh, I, this is great things. And Adam spent some time speaking to us, along with a, a dozen of, dozens of people that seemed to be all around him during that day. And uh, Adam, tell me a little bit about what, uh, what you're doing. I mean, uh, let's start there. At that, that, uh, well, you know, I've been doing this, all of this, I've been doing this for about uh, 33 years now and I'm still trying to figure that out <laughs> you know, like, what am I doing right, right. I'm doing it okay I'm doing it well enough because I'm still doing it and people want what I do but what am I doing every day I wake up and I get to mess with colors and I get to smear paint and I get to play with my dreams and I get to express myself in ways that uh, uh, I'm just blessed to be able to do and and to be able to have a vehicle for my work and and uh, the ability to to express myself you know, in ways of, you know, what do I think here to be able to bring it out and get it out onto a canvas so that other people can, can get their own feelings from it and get their own interpretations and enjoy it for whatever, for whatever they, they see in my work. It's just, it's a blessing to be able to do that. We talked briefly about your, your background and your, yeah, yeah. your family background. Why don't you give us a little sort of... Uh, it's a pretty unique situation. Yeah. Um, I'm the eldest of three kids in a family of artists. It's like a mother, father, brother, two brothers and a sister who are all professional fine artists, painters, and um, we were raised in the streets. You know, urban art is our thing. Uh, our mother started sculpting when we were children. She used us as models and she sold her sculptures in the street fairs in Los Angeles in and around the greater LA area. And so we kind of grew up in the life. My father uh, started painting in his 40s and, and never really had much natural ability, but he had an affinity for color and he had a, a sense of design that he discovered somewhat late in life and the next thing you know he's selling hundreds and hundreds of original paintings a year and eventually became one of the most collected street artists in Los Angeles probably in the history of Los Angeles and so yeah we have an interesting family dynamic and uh, I just did a show this last weekend in the desert in Palm Springs where my brother was 50 yards down the path selling his work and I was you know up the street you know in my booth and um, this is a common thing we're constantly <laughs> supportive of each other and inspired by one another and um, we're very fortunate. Uh, I'm looking at the use of form obviously yeah. where the sculpt thing comes in mm -hmm. and then the use of color in yes. your, your work so there's an interesting blending yes. of that. Uh, yes. I'm sure that doesn't uh, escape you. No, 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 no. <laughs> in fact uh, a great deal of what has inspired me of late uh, especially with these animals um, my mother was a sculptor and she sculpted a series of, of elephants, of, well, an entire series of animals. And the elephant was, was definitely one that was inspiring to me. And uh, I started playing with, with some concepts and some ideas. And uh, I developed a piece that, that eventually became, probably I think it was in 08, that became one of my most signature and well-recognized paintings called Serendipity. You can see it on the website, which is adamstone.com. And um, it's led to an entire series of, of, of work based on spirituality, um, the, the animal form. The, I, I love animals. I love people too. But as you can see, I'm a, love, a lover of character. I'm a lover of movement. You'll, you'll find there is movement in every single thing that I do. And this was inspired by a somewhat recent trip I had to Spain. I was in, uh, from top to bottom, you know, I was in Madrid, I was in Sevilla, I was in Cordoba, I was in Barcelona, and in many of the places that I visited, I saw the most amazing street art. Uh, these shops that, that you'd see at night when they close their, their, like these metal gray doors to protect the shops. The street artists and graffiti artists would tag them up and they'd paint on them, and I saw the most amazing works of art I've ever seen, 
really on these, these security gates of a lot of the, the business establishments in these cities and small towns and narrow, narrow you know, alleyways and whatnot. And I thought, you know, this is going to definitely inspire a new series. At one point, I'm going I'm to have to start playing with it. And this is one of the first pieces I, I've attempted. And uh, you've got elements of, of, uh, of, of, of work that I saw in Sevilla. You know, you've got the flamenco. I saw one of my first flamenco shows, a true flamenco show in Sevilla. And it was a very special moment. And um, so this La Sonrisa Que Nunca Falte translates into the sunrise you can never miss. And this was written on the glass front of a bicycle shop. And I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why. However, it was, it was inspiring. It was, it was inspiring. Right, and, right, and yes, right, exactly, right. exactly. And how Impossible. long have you been working on this particular piece? I mean, since this the piece, trip, I, obviously. Is what time did you get here? <laughs> really? <laughs> no, no, no. I started this piece a couple weeks ago. Okay. And, um, you know, with my work, it's interesting. Um, they're almost like when I get up and I paint, a lot of times I have real ideas, concrete ideas of what I want to play with and uh, concepts that I want to explore. And so often they literally change up as I'm working. They're truly organic where I might start wanting to paint a dancer and the next thing I know this dancer is riding an elephant. And it's almost like I'm expressing whatever it is. I don't even always know how I tap into it. It must be subconscious. But these elements and the details and the colors, uh, I'm so affected by what is going on internally that often, it really, it shows up in the work. Whatever I'm doing, whether it's colors that I choose or elements that I choose, I'm feeling it somewhere and somehow it's got to make sense when it's all said and done but often when I'm working it doesn't make sense and these stories tend to evolve organically over time they, they reveal themselves to me the deeper that I go and the more true that I am with myself and being a channel to, to basically you know bring whatever it is that I'm feeling up forth to the surface the more true the work is, I believe. And, you know, so this piece right here may look done to you, but who knows? I might be inspired to paint a zebra on this uh, thing right, as right, soon right. as you leave. I don't know. But you'll go I don't know. That's the point, right? Yeah, yeah right. sometimes I'm having so much fun that I can truly <laughs> screw it all up. Okay. And, you know, and then it just takes some, a little bit of returning back to, you know, course and altering a bit here and there and coming back to where I need to be. But I have fun with my work. And, but no fear know. of exploration is mm. what I'm hearing. No, right? no, no, no. Right. It's, it's the surprise element that I'm addicted to. That is my addiction, is not knowing what I'm doing, what I'm creating, but just being really, truly in the moment while I'm doing it and trusting my instincts. My background started as an actor, uh -huh. uh, and then I moved into directing. And um, the whole idea of an actor struggling with a character uh, based on uh, the fact that they had blockages, blockages in their sort of creative process and so they they wouldn't maybe go with an instinct or or, or some sort of you know feel that led them to do this or explore mm -hmm. this way they were afraid of exploration mm -hmm. and so as a as director my job was to pull those discs out of that tube to clear that space to allow that of course ability to of course. be in that moment mm -hmm. you know and i find it funny that you expressed it so it's like i'm hearing an acting coach talking about acting but we're not so well I studied acting for 15 years <laughs> <laughs> so I have a little bit of an edge oh, okay, I know okay, what you're talking right, about right, and right. I, I I've been there and I yeah. understand it and, and in a sense understanding character and how to build a character from the foundation up meaning your your emotional life your physical life is not easy right it's really not easy it's something that has to be honed over time over years and um, I was fortunate enough to have some great teachers as well as some instincts as well that I could trust. But yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. You know, as an artist, if you cannot trust your own instincts, how can you trust anything? How can you, how can you say that, you know, I'm going to portray this character in, in, in this fashion? If you don't understand yourself, how do you know what to bring to this character. If you don't know how yourself differs from this character, mm -hmm. how can you know what colors to bring to this character you're playing if you don't have a true understanding of who you are? Mm -hmm. So, as in anything, I believe trusting yourself and who you are, whether you're an actor, a painter, a writer, a director, a uh, sculptor, doesn't make a difference. Having a good sense of your own self and what, what, what makes you tick and what turns you on will open channels into all of the other things that you do creatively and, and give you just more empowerment, I believe, more, more, more power in your work. 
man, I hope that made sense. Uh, this does, is all, by the way, this is all just off the cuff. <laughs> there is no rehearsing here. No rehearsing. I don't know where he's coming. I gotta be like, you know, going like this. I don't know how wide this this lens is. I don't know oh, what he's getting. You know, do I have like dirty underwear up there that I don't even know about? Is, now you touched on something at the beginning of that business. Yeah. And it, an interesting spot for most artists. Uh, kind of a blind spot for many artists. Many yeah. artists, yeah. And at the yeah. university, I taught at the university for eight years. So one of the things I used to moan about in, in uh, administrative meetings was we're not teaching our artists, our actors, to be business people, and thus they're going to end up being waiters and waitresses for the rest of their life waiting for their big break. Right. And they need to understand that the art that they create is valuable, and they're valuable, and, they're, and they should stand and try to learn business. So... Can you, What's your feeling on that? Oh man, that's a loaded <laughs> question. <laughs> Where does one begin? Right, right, right. You know, uh, commerce, you know, um, being a businessman and an artist and marrying the two is not always the most natural of things. Um, it's hard enough to express yourself. It's hard enough to have the, the support around you um, with your family and your friends and just life, you know, to, to support you enough to, for you to stand up and say, I am an artist, whether you make a living at it or not, just to stand in your own two feet and, and, and look at people in the eye and, and just be able to state, I am an artist, I was born to be an artist, is hard enough. Um, but when you have to consider all of the things that you have to consider to, to make a living at it, there are only so many things that you can control. Whether you're a musician, whether you're an actor, a painter, it doesn't make a difference. All you are responsible for is your vessel. You cannot control everything else. You cannot control how many people want to plug in you know, the MP3 and listen to your latest song. You can't control how many people want to take your latest painting and put it right above their, their fireplace and you know, stare at it you know, for the next 30 years. All you can do is your best. All you can do is, is make a commitment to yourself that you're going to honor this path. You're going to give it the respect and the attention and the focus and determination and drive that it needs to become the best at whatever it is you've chosen to, you know, to do, the best that you can possibly be, and then everything else starts slowly falling into place. But you've got to really believe. You've got to really, even when you don't believe, you've got to really believe that you're on your path and you've made the right choice and you are good. You are worthy of being an artist. And it's not always the easiest thing to do when you're, when you're you know, having to make a living doing it. There are sacrifices that I've had to make along the way, paintings I may or may not have chosen to do at any one particular time because it's a big job coming in. And you know, this is how, finding the balance between what you feel like you were born to do and then finding a way to kind of merge it into the, the highway of working with others and, and finding a way to work within a system that you didn't devise and a system that's already kind of predetermined and set up and you kind of you get in on the slow lane <laughs> and you're doing 50 miles an hour and sometimes you got to speed up and sometimes you got to slow down but just stay true to yourself and just have the faith that all you can do is the best that you can do and if you stick to it long enough and you don't isolate yourself in a bubble and, and you're a good person effectively you're not a jerk you yeah, know yeah, where you're burning that. bridges you know because <laughs> right. you do need people right. in this business um, your opportunities are going to present themselves Video. books classes right. you learn real quick how to negotiate out there on the street <laughs> Yeah. You might want this for a painting, and someone says, well, I got this, and, you know, there's another 50 paintings within 200 feet that they can choose from that may or may not be as, as expensive as yours, and you've got to figure out how to handle things in the moment, and ultimately people have to really engage in your work. They've got to really like your work, and they've got to like you uh, to invest, to invest in you. If people are buying your work because they really want to live with it, you know, there's, there's, a, there's an element of, I want to like this guy. I want to I wanna vibe on this guy. I want to know where he's coming from. And I, I, I kind of feel like, you know, I'm happy our paths crossed. And, and how cool is this? You got to, what, what, what was it? The, the, the Karate Kid? You got to keep <laughs> chopping, wax on, wax on, wax off, wax on, right. for about 30 years. <laughs>
<laughs> and I'm still waxing. Oh, I'm man. still waxing, but I'm starting to see a little bit of shine yeah. here. There are books to read that can help you how to become a better salesperson. Um, there's no better experience than being out there in the field and, right. and, and getting a show together, standing in front of your work, engaging with people as they come up and talk to you about your work, getting to know them, getting used to talking about your work, getting used to express yourself, even if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, right. at least you're engaging with them and there's, you find some kind of common ground right. and every little conversation you have, every bit of dialogue that you, that you have with someone, every time you do it, it gets easier and easier and easier. You get Business is very, very important and you could be the most talented painter, the most talented musician, but if you don't have character, if you don't have a personality, if you don't have a, a sense of who you are and people genuinely must like you. Uh, you got to work on that yeah. <laughs> because they don't knock on the door and say, who do I make a check out to? No. You know, you got to really be willing to put yourself out there in situations that aren't always comfortable. But if you're just yourself and you relax and you, you know, even if you just shoot the shit with somebody, it's getting you that much closer to be able to, to engage about dialogue of price points and, you know, shipping costs and, you know, custom work that you may or may not be interested in doing, you know, it, it, it just comes more natural through, through process. Well, I, I know that from my meeting with you, and, and there were hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people over there over that, that weekend. Yeah, that, uh, of course. And so you met person after person. So my best friend and I were there, and that's exactly what I experienced. It, you know, I came up, I liked your work, we started talking about it, you were really personal, especially after, and I hate to dog a place, but yeah. it, this this thing, it, it, I have to give Bergamont at least the thumbs up on the fact that they motivated me so much because I went there and had a very unpleasant experience because I believe that art is communal and it's the basis of communication and, 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 and warmth and, and all that stuff that the, you know, from the beginning of time, art, you know, how art began. Of course. And, and to go into a place and, and feel like you completely can't engage you know, beautiful art. It was it was just depressing. So going from there yeah. to Beverly Hills, and literally every place we stopped, people were wonderfully personable. Wanted to talk about their art. Well, you're meeting you know? the artists. Yes. You are meeting right. the artists. You go to exactly. Bergamon Station. Now you're you're, the you're lucky if you have a salesperson behind a desk that's willing to talk to you, right. knowing that you're not necessarily there to purchase, right. but someone who's really so so engaged with their artists or their or, or this 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 painter or that sculptor that they're willing to have a a, a meaningful discussion or dialogue with a stranger about process and about it's it's not always easy to do that because it's a business yeah, it's yeah. a business and you know but they you can smell you know. you never know who's gonna buy your next painting and write you a check for a million bucks that's right but yeah unfortunately that's the way it is even for artists walking into yeah. gallery spaces you know they just there's a time and a place to, to be selling your work and and to try to shake hands and and you know angle in certain places right. and then there's a time where you realize, well, they may not be open to that right now, and you got to be able to sense that out. But unfortunately, it happens a lot. In the, yeah. So, Adam, uh, as we wrap up here, why don't you give? Uh, you did it before. Uh, why don't you give any information you want to give in terms of people contacting you and where you might be over the next? Okay, few months let's as see. The wow. Okay, my next show is going to be a one-day event in La Quinta, California, in the desert, and I believe that's like the tw the Saturday, the twenty-third of March, um, and then after that we'll have our opening yes, right. in April. So I gotta get busy. Uh -huh. I've got some commissions to do. I'm starting a mural in Beverly Hills, uh, my first outdoor mural. Um, I've been asked for maybe two and a half decades about doing mural work and I've, I've just always been too busy with the studio work, but a friend of mine has this beautiful new house and she's got this beautiful new pool and jacuzzi area that has this unbelievable brick wall, retaining wall you know, over this, this kind of like fire pit. I'm gonna be doing a, a beautiful mural, mural for her that I'm gonna start in a couple weeks and getting commissions done. But if you wanna see my work, you can, you can catch it at adamstone.com. A lot of my latest pieces are there. You can also join my fan page on Facebook, which is, I think, under Adam Stone Art. Um, you could Google me. God knows what's going to come up. And if I, if I offend any of you, I apologize in advance. There's some stuff out there. I don't know what, what's going on. But um, I would say the, the website is, is a great place to start. Great. Well, no. folks, I don't know if Adam's going to bother you with this beautiful work here, so I wouldn't worry about going and looking online for him. All right. So, Adam, thank you so much for allowing us to come into your home. Folks, April 1st at the RSP Creative Studios, we have the Spectrum's exhibit, 
April 1st, Adam will be there. Yes, I will. And some other great artists that uh, will blow your socks off. So we're looking forward to uh, uh, you folks following us. This is Robin Scott Peters for Arting About, and we'll talk to you next week. Peace out. Thanks, Take Adam. care.